Okay, so in the previous video we looked at equations and graphs of circles um, and today we want to just continue that idea on and have a look at semicircles. So we've already seen that when we transpose the basic equation of the circle to make y the subject, we did this in the previous video, we ended up with y equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And what we realised is that what we actually had there was the equation of the two semicircles, that, the separate equations of the two semicircles that make up the whole circle. So the positive square root of 1 minus x squared is the top half of the circle and the negative square root, again if you think about transformations, that's just going to be reflected in the x-axis just by sticking a negative in front of it, so it's the bottom half of the semicircle. Okay. So we already looked at those. However, we could also rearrange to make x the subject and get two separate equations. x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus y squared. And if we do that, we get two further semicircles. x equals the positive square root of 1 minus y squared is the right-hand side of the circle. And x equals the negative square root is the left-hand side of the circle. Really, you can just think about it. Here you've got, so let's make that, that's a plus, that's a minus, this is a plus, and this is a minus. So here we've got y is equal to positive values. Oh look, we're up here where y is positive. y is equal to negative values. Oh look, it's the half of the circle that's down here where y is negative. Here, x is equal to positive values. Oh look, it's the part of the circle where x is positive x is equal to negative values, oh, it's the part of the circle where x is negative. So it's easy enough to work out which semicircle you're working with. If I've got the equation of a semicircle, and again, this, the trick here is to, to differentiate between a square root function, x plus 3, da, 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 and a semicircle, which would be 1 minus x squared or 3 minus x squared. So you'll have an x squared under the square root if it's a semicircle. The first thing I would be wanting to identify is, is it the top half, the bottom half, or the right half, or the left half? Which half of a circle do I have? And then you need to be able to identify radius and centre. And from my opinion, the best way for me to do that is to rearrange the semicircle equation back into the whole circle so I can easily identify centre and radius using the same techniques I used for the circle in the previous video. We can, however, see for the more general semicircles, if we have a change of radius, this would be the y is positive, so this would be the top half with a radius of r, okay? This one would be the bottom half where y is negative, again, with a radius of r. This one is x is positive, so that's the right-hand side, again, with a radius of r. And this one would be the left-hand side, again with a radius of r, okay? Um, and we could even extend that further by rearranging our most general form with the change of center and the change of radius. So for example, this is the top half of a circle with its center at hk and its radius of r. This would be the bottom half of a circle oops, with its center at hk and a radius of r, okay? This would be the right-hand side of a semicircle with its centre at HK and a radius of R. And this would be the left-hand side of a semicircle with its centre at HK and a radius of R. Once again, the first thing I'd be looking for is, right, there's a square root and the variable underneath the square root is squared. So it's a semicircle, not a square root function. Is it top half y is positive, bottom half y is negative, top half x is positive, bottom half x is negative, oh, sorry, right half x is positive, left half x is negative. And then I would rearrange back from this form into the equation of the circle so I can correctly see center and radius. You might be fine at it, you might be fine, I mean definitely, oh sorry, these are, you might be able to see the h and k, but it is a bit more complicated, especially with x. Um, I think it's generally easier to identify semicircle, which half of the, sem of the circle is it, top, bottom, left, right, and then go back to the equation of the circle to identify centre and radius. So let's have a look at some examples. So here we want to sketch the graph of y equals the negative square root of 36 minus x squared. Okay, so the minute there's an x squared under here, it's a semicircle, not a square root. Okay. 
Um, then the next thing I'm looking at is it is y equals negative square root, so it is the bottom half. Okay, so the shape that we're looking at here is going to be the bottom half of a circle. Okay. Then if you are comfortable, you might be able to identify the radius in the center. I'm certainly saying that the center is still at the origin here and the radius is going to be 6. But if you have trouble at this point, or you, there's a lot going on here sometimes, possibly the better thing for you to do now is once you've identified which half of the circle you have, bottom half, then rearrange it back to the general form for an equation of a circle. So squaring both sides here gives me y squared equals 36 minus x squared. Adding x squared to both sides here gives me this. And so now I can see really clearly without any ambiguity that my center is at 0, 0 and my radius is the square root of 36, which is 6. Okay, so we can draw our semicircle doesn't matter how far away that is as long as it's equidistant everywhere. So bottom half of the circle. Center is important but it is the origin so we don't have to label it but you can if you want. X intercepts at 6, 0 and negative 6, 0 and Y intercept at 0, negative 6. So all of those points need to be labeled. This one optional only because it's the origin. If it was anywhere else we would definitely need to label it. Okay. Question example two. Sketch the graph of y equals sorry of x equals the square root of seven minus y squared. So again, the variable underneath the square root is squared, and so it is a semicircle. Okay. X is equal to the positive square root. So the shape is where x is positive, and so it's going to be the right hand side of a circle. Okay. And then again, to help me see what's happening, I might choose to rearrange it back into a circle. So square both sides first and add y squared. Okay, so I can see center is at zero, zero and the radius is root seven. Okay, so we can draw in our semicircle out to the right, so let's mark those points. Let's draw in a semicircle. That is going to be the point root 7, 0. This is 0, negative root 7, and this is 0, root 7. Okay. Again, center is important point still, but it's the origin. Make sure it's clear that that's the origin. All right, example three. Again, I'm seeing a square root, so I might think, oh, square root function, but I'm seeing that the variable underneath the square root is squared, so it's a semicircle. I'm seeing that x is equal to a negative square root, okay, and so the shape is a semicircle where x is negative, so the left hand side of the circle, okay. Once again, I prefer to be safe, oh, sorry, so it's a negative square root and to just rearrange it back into the equation of the circle to help me see what's happening. So I'm going to take away 4 from both sides. x minus 4 equals the negative square root of 25 minus x squared. I'm going to square both sides. So x minus 4 squared equals 25 minus x squared. Oh, sorry, I've got x's. Oh, I've got x in both. That's my fault. Sorry. Let's fix that again. That should be y. I'm so used to having x's on the right and y's on the left. All right, let's add y squared. So we've got x minus 4 all squared plus y squared equals 25. And so now we can see that our center is at 4, 0, and the radius is the square root of 25, which is 5. Okay, so let's draw that in. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, Four, that's my center. One, two, three, four, five. That's going to be an x-intercept and also the sort of edge of the circle. And then we want to go the same kind of distance up here and down here. So we are going to be crossing the y-axis somewhere. So let's work out where those points are. So y-intercepts. Um, you can go back to the original equation if you want, but then you'll have to do all that rearranging again. So I'm going to go into this equation I've already rearranged, but either way. So we're going to have x, sorry, we're making x zero, aren't we? 
we're going to have negative 4 squared, so it was x minus 4 all squared, plus y squared equals 25. So that is 16 plus y squared equals 25. y squared is 25 minus 16, which is 9, and therefore y is plus or minus root 9, which is plus or minus 3. Okay, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to go through there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so circle, oops, sorry. Let's fix that one. Too much. That'll do. Okay, so this was, what did we decide? Center was at four zero, so yep, that's four zero. Radius was five. So this is at 9, 0 over here, and this is negative 1, 0. We worked out these y-intercepts, that's 0, 3, and that's negative 3, 0. We don't technically need those points, although you can always mark them if you want, but all axis intercepts and the centre, making sure that that gives you at least the centre and one additional point. Okay, final example here. Sketch the graph of y equals the positive square root. Okay, again, it's a square root, but there's x is being squared underneath the square root, and so it's a semicircle. y is positive, and so it is the top half. So the shape is going to be this one. Again, I'm going to focus on rearranging it first. If you don't need to rearrange it, that's perfectly fine. Okay but I think sometimes it's the safer way to go about it. So I'm going to take away 2 from both sides. I'm going to square both sides. 4 minus x plus 1 all squared. I'm going to add that bracket. So x plus 1 all squared plus y minus 2 all squared equals 4. Okay, and there we are. So we can see that we've got our centre at negative 1 2 and we've got a radius of 2. Okay, so negative 1, 2. Uh, just thinking about where my axes need to be. Okay, and radius is 2. So we're definitely going to have to be able to go up to 3, but I don't need to go further than that. So we can use quite a big scale. Um, and then Oh no, it's 2 plus 2, so we need to go up to 4, sorry. So, same scale on both axes if we can. Okay, so negative 1, 2 is my centre. My radius is 2, so we're going to come up here to negative 1, 4, and we're going to come down here onto the x-axis, so that'll be negative 1, 0. My radius is 2, so we're going to come out there, and we're going to come out to there. So we're going to be crossing the y-axis again. We need to work out y-intercepts which means letting x equal 0. Now in this instance, we've got y the subject here, and that's what we're trying to find. So I'm going to let x equal 0 in the original equation in this case. So y equals the square root of 4 minus 1 squared plus 2. So that's 4 minus 1, which is 3 plus 2. Uh, now, hang on, I seem to have lost my plus minus square root in doing... Ah, we're not drawing the whole circle. And I made that mistake up here too, didn't I? Okay, so we've only got that half. We don't need that bit. So we can chop off our axes a bit. Sorry, let me just oh, let me just do that and get rid of a bit of this. Okay, let's go back to the stroke eraser, put the cas back. Okay, so my apologies. So we should have just had the um, left half of the semicircle there. So um, intercepts and um, centre which we've got. Now we've only got the um, top half of the circle so we actually don't need that x-axis intercept and we, that's why we've only got one y-intercept when we use the semicircle equation because we're only crossing up here. Okay. Alright, so drawing in our semicircle, just write that again. The best. Okay, so that is going to be um, 0, 2 plus root 3 or root 3 plus 2. Um, end points. Uh, actually, my apologies. So up here, sorry because I forgot this one was a semicircle. Axis intercept center 
but for all graphs, endpoints. Okay, so a graph just can't stop randomly in the middle of nowhere. That point must be marked. So in fact, in this instance, because they're endpoints of the graph, they're important. So this was four five. I think radius was five. Yep, and that's four negative five. Okay, so here I've got my center at least one up, um, of center any axis intercept, which is the one y intercept. And then I need these endpoints as well. So that's going to be negative 1, 2, and that's going to be negative 3, 2. Okay, sorry about the mix up with the semicircle in that previous example. All right, so exercise 4D questions 6 and 7.